Hello and welcome to our second session of our second day of ZineFest 2022. Um, we are very excited uh, for this presentation. My name is Tara and I'm a teen services librarian for the Rohnert Park Katadi Library. And my colleagues, Zaida and Serena, and I are very honored to be able to work with Chelsea, Mayor, and Melissa from the Santa Rosa Zine Collective to bring you Santa Rosa Zine Fest 2022. Um, we've already had two amazing events so far this week, and we have um, virtual events um, also this Friday, as well as an in-person outdoor event at the uh, Northwest Regional Library in Santa Rosa on Saturday. So we hope that you'll sign up for those events as well at sonomalibrary.org slash zinefest2022. So before we get started and introduce our presenter this evening, uh, we would like to go over just a couple of details. So we do have Spanish interpretation available for this session, thanks to Julie and Lorna from the Communication Bridge. So this interpretation can be accessed by uh, clicking interpretation on the lower right corner of your screen and selecting either English or Spanish. The session will be recorded in both English and Spanish and will be posted to YouTube within a few days of the event. If you have questions throughout the event, please do use the Q&A function to ask them. And um, this will be interactive, so there will be times to be able to give input, ask questions, as well as give some input into what Andrew is doing in his presentation. So please do use the chat. We'd love this to be interactive. We wanna hear from you, hear your responses. Um, love all of that. So thank you so much. And I'm very happy to now turn things over to Melissa from Santa Rosa Zine Collective um, to introduce our amazing presenter. So Melissa. Thanks, Tara. Um, I am Melissa from the Santa Rosa Zine Collective, um, and today I'm so excited to introduce our next presenter, Andrew Meekum. Andrew is the Executive Director of North Bay Letterpress Arts in Sebastopol. He has been creative since day one. Throughout school, he was the, hey, could you draw me something, kid? For his last two years of high school, he convinced the counselor that art was visual language and replaced foreign language with additional art classes. After high school, he attended um, SJSU, but was more interested in skateboarding and enjoying life. But eventually he moved to San Francisco and attended the Academy of Art University where he received a degree in printmaking. He still firmly believes that art is visual language and using letterpress and text in creative way furthers that concept. Today, Andrew is going to tour the North Bay, North Bay Letterpress Arts and do a demo. There will be a ability for participants to participate live as he does his um, demo. So we'll let you know when that happens. Um, and also the prints that he makes today will be available at the in-person event on Saturday. So you'll get to see them in person if you are able to make it on Saturday. So let's give a warm welcome to Andrew. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to ZineFest, thank you. Hi there, hi everyone. Um, welcome, uh, thanks again, everyone who put this together. Uh, it's a really amazing opportunity for me and for the NBLA and everyone who's involved to share our passion for printmaking and zines and just being creative and, and expressing yourselves. Um, I know there's a Spanish interpretation, so I'm going to try and talk slowly. I loved uh, the pauses from Amanda's presentation, so I'll try and do some of those as well. Um, I'm using a phone and a gimbal, so I'm going to walk around the North Bay Letterpress Arts Studio. And when I do that, I'm going to flip around my camera so you're seeing out. And there you go. And look at that. There's people here. So this is the North Bay Letterpress Arts. We are in Sebastopol, California. Um, we are a traditional letterpress shop, but we push the practice of creative and fine arts with the letterpress medium. And so what that means is there's a lot of uh, expression and freedom of expression with the way people use um, these machines and equipment in a more contemporary way. 
And so I'll walk you through the shop here. Uh, I first wanna walk over, um, we have a typewriter. If you wanna put your email address in, the typewriter it has Bluetooth right to the computer. I'm just joking, that doesn't exist. Um, these are some posters that previous people have made in the shop. And then I'm also, I'm the executive director and I'm also a studio printer. And we have, I think right now, 14 studio printers. And this is their work on the wall. Um, there's just various types of work. I'll pan slowly. That's a book here. Some kind of information. Um, texture, a lot of ink and texture. Letterpress, a lot of people think of it as just this sort of stuff, cards and nice invitations and gifts and poetry, which it very much is. Um, but there's also printing on fabric and layering things. And these are books as well. I don't wanna get them down because they'll be a little tricky. And this is one of the first prints I made as a member. So um, then we can walk over here. These are some students work. We do offer workshops and uh, we will be launching those soon. We actually stayed closed for over two years during the pandemic. So we've been um, kind of spoiled having the studio to ourselves here. Um, I'll just kind of get in. You'll see the students start with poetry or phrasing, and then some of them get into some sort of cuts and symbols. Let me see if that's it doesn't want to focus so well. Um, and then I'm going to go this way. And I want to talk about how letterpress connects to zines. Uh, that was important on my list. Uh, there's a form. Let me center my camera, there we go. So there's a form that dates back um, almost five or 600 years. It's called a chap book, C-H-A-P-B-O-O-K. And a chap book is a small independent publication that originally were printed on letterpress presses. And they still exist today. A lot of poets love to use them. And the idea behind a chap book was exactly what a zine is. Um, and that's from the very beginning when they made chapbooks, they started in uh, the United Kingdom and they were being dispersed out of satchels. People would walk around and say, I got a chapbook, whatever it costs, you know, at the time, two shillings or something, I don't know, some cheap amount. And they would just um, get them out to people. And there was a huge influx. This was the late 15th century. And there was a huge influx of people wanting to read more. And, and they would just throw some money out and grab a little book and throw it in their pocket and go home and read. And it really launched into that sort of, you know, world we're in now, which is just vastly filled with books and all sorts of things. But the chapbook really was a zine. If you trace it back, it really is um, what we would consider a zine. And then I want to walk over, this is a book I made, the first book I made here, it was a book of my son's poems, his name is Julian, and it's just poems that he recited, and my wonderful wife wrote them down, and I typeset them and put them in a book. And so, much like a zine, it's a, a nice little paper item that's easy to um, consume and digest in a short amount of time, it's pretty esoteric. This was a zine recently I purchased from a friend, Scott Baums, who is an amazing designer and advocate for creative expression. Um, this is a zine I finished recently myself. And then a whole bunch of others here. These will be for sale this weekend. They're sketchbooks that come with a pencil. I call them sketchy books. And then this is my favorite artist. Uh, contemporary artist. He's from the skateboard industry that they mentioned. I was deeply involved with that industry for about two decades. His name is Mark Gonzalez, and he lives in the East Coast, but he travels the world over. He's very well known for being just over the top creative. And this book, Nonstop Poetry, is a collection of zines he made. And he made them at a copy shop on direct on the copy machine where it staples and spits them out and they cost almost nothing. And this is reproductions of the pages from these zines that he made for 
five to 10 years. It's an amazing book. Uh, my wife got it for me as a gift. And again, uh, the, the zine world for me, just, I love it. I love the fact that people create these independent publications that just freely express all sorts of ideas and such. So now I'm gonna walk through the shop here and talk a bit about the equipment. No, I got it here. So, um, or yeah, maybe why not? I have an assistant here, so I'm gonna let them hold the camera. If you need to center it, there's a trigger on the back here. If you push it twice, it'll center it back in. I don't know why it's like stuck. And then this goes up and down with your thumb. Cool. So this is, um, this is a type of letter press. It's called a platen press. And it's widely known because of this flywheel. This round piece is called the flywheel and everyone knows them. They're often used in logos for letter press. They're just so recognizable as um, an interesting piece of the machine. And the way it works is the wheel gets going and these rollers go up and they go down, they ink the form and then they pick ink up off of this and go back down and ink the form. And then you're feeding paper from here to here. And that's how that type of press works. It's called a platen press. This in particular is from 1885 and it still operates to this day. Um, we have the info about the presses. It's pretty amazing. We've kept them up uh, very well. They're, um, they're in great working order for how old they are. They do need some new parts from time to time, but for the most part, they, they work very well. Um, this press back here, hey, look, we have a guest. Who's that? Wait a minute. Wait, that's... That's Amanda. That's right. I brought you one of my zines. Oh, wow. Look at that. Amanda brought me a zine. See, I love getting zines. Now I want to go disappear and read this for a while. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Great to see you. Thank you. I'll let everyone know today is my birthday. I turned 48 today. <gasps> So I'm a pretty old zinester, a zany zinester. Happy birthday! Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. So your timing for this gift is just perfect. Hey. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thanks. Yeah, it's a it's a present to give this tour. So let's walk back here. So this is this press is the hand press, and this one's sort of the rock star of the equipment because the way this press is designed, it's kind of basically the exact sort of set up that the original Gutenberg press, which was invented in the early 15th century, and, and everyone seems to know Gutenberg is sort of the rock star of the letterpress industry. And in Germany, he was trying to figure out a way to print paper more efficiently. And he had his eyes on grape presses, which is ironic. We're here in Sonoma County, which is wine country. But he saw the way that the grape press was squeezing down. And he knew that if you could do that on paper, it would get the deep impression that you need and if you could do it in a way you could really get some nice prints happening so the original is a little more like this we have this little toy here it's a replica it was wood of course it was large pieces of wood that were carved and designed that way and, and there's some that still work in operation there's a printing museum in LA that has a few of them and a replica and they do print on them still but this one, it operates almost the exact same. The, this pulls, the paper's inside. Once this goes under, it presses down, it comes back up and we'll do a demo of that later. Um, the stuff over here, I wanted to talk about, um, that's another platen press, by the way. So I'll print, I'll sh I won't print on that, but I will show you how it operates later. I was using this yesterday for the Zine Fest. Um, let me go on this side. This is some common letterpress equipment. This is um, a drawer, a type drawer. You can center it with the button. Just press the button twice. No, this one, yep. There you go. There I know it gets a little lost. That gimbal camera starts to say, where are you going? 
this is called the California case, the way it's laid out. And that's because it's in this order, which doesn't make sense when you first see it, but it, it's actually very well thought out and it's designed so that the people that used it, let me get one thing here, forgot a very crucial piece. Equipment. These are called sticks. And you would grab a stick and you would know how wide you need to set some type. And you would pick your type and you would start grabbing. And you put them upside down and backwards. And you set them in and you grab them. And once you get them locked in, you use some spacers back here and you use some more spacers. You get it as tight as you can in the stick. The stick has to be nice and tight. And so when you're done with that, I'll show you, this is a piece I did yesterday. It says Santa Rosa Zine Fest backwards. Whoa, so cool. And that was done in a stick. And then you tie it up with rope so that way it doesn't all fall apart. Because when that happens, it's really depressing. <laughs> because guess. you have to set it all again. <laughs> and it does happen. Yeah. So what, what you do for all the types of presses, it's all a different system of getting the type or the forms or the cuts, which are, cuts are basically things like flowers or handles. Those are called cuts. And we have a lot of them. We have a lot of old cuts. There's a big finger pointing at you, or maybe he's pointing at the duck, who knows? But these cuts have been used. They were used in newspapers. They were used in books or whatever they were used for. And they're still used today. We can still use them and ink them and print with them. This one's a recent acquirer I love. Wow. And that's another cool part about letterpress that this stuff is, re is still in use, still in circulation and very much, um, you know, a, a way to make and express yourself. And that there's something magical about that using these pieces that someone else used years ago and you don't know who they were and what they were making but you are kind of reinventing and using these things and that's sort of fun the same with the type much of the type we have you can see all those drawers those are all type drawers every single one of them in fact i wanted to show you this one this is eight point type eight point type is that big oh it's so teeny tiny that's eight point type. And so eight point type is a challenge to set because you can't actually really see it when you're setting it. Um, you can set it and then take a proof and spell check or not spell check, proof it, right? Yeah. And they go, they range in size. Um, we use the points and people still, this is six point and then, this is 36 point, it's a little bit bigger. And there's, there's wood type, so there's metal and wood type, and this is obviously much bigger than six point. So this is wood type, which is 20 line. Which is a confusing thing, they use a different measurement system for wood type. Um, so we have all these different type to choose from, and the founder of IOTA Press, NBLA started about 14 years ago, Eric Johnson, he lives here. He's still active member of the shop. He wanted to print books himself. He came next door. Well, he started in his garage, bought some equipment. Then he moved next door and people found out he was there and they started visiting and saying, I want to make books too. And he said, sure, come on over and make books, poems, whatever. And so he amassed all this equipment over the years and he's learned himself. He's self-trained, self-taught. Uh -huh. And he went to great lengths to do things like catalog the type, the types of typefaces. And typography and letterpress also go hand in hand very much. Um, there's all wow. sorts of typefaces and sizes and you can go through here and pick what you want and make sure you have enough of it for what you're trying to set. And there's, there's your six points. So your six points like a thin line of almost nothing. It's so teeny it's tiny. So teeny, tiny. <laughs> And then we have the wood type, mm. which is the big stuff. Nice and bold. Nice and bold. Um, 
And so he went to great lengths with a lot of the studio printers help to catalog everything. They also cataloged all the cuts, which we have over a thousand different cuts and that, that catalogs over here. And that's just a catalog that goes through. You want animals, we have animals page. You want bugs, we have bugs or animals. There's some horses, some more animals, oh, some food. Ooh. And it's all cataloged by type. There's a little guy listening to a record. And so you can go through and just start picking things and designing and thinking about how you're gonna integrate them. Who is that guy? I'm not really sure. Do I want him in my design? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> and you walk through and think about it and you, oh, she's kind of fussy. Maybe that would be kind of fun to make a card with her. This one's been reused wow. a, yacht, a lot. It's sort of a strange contraption. Holds the book up so you don't need to waste the energy in your arms. Right. <laughs> So yeah, so there's a lot of fun here to be had. Then there's something real quick. I wanna show you what's called the jewelry box before we move on. Jewelry, it means small ornaments and small things. So the jewelry box is rather addicting. Um, there's some people who exclusively use the jewelry box to create, um, let me find a good example. There's all sorts of stuff here, there's like, tiny flowers and all sorts of florals. And a real popular thing in letterpress lately is to create an image using those as a matrix, but create a larger image filled with all these little things to look at. Yeah, so intricate. Super intricate. Here, I'll be right back. The founder, Eric Johnson, reprinted this book. This was one of his early books and he reprinted it recently for a book festival in Richmond coming up. It's called Ding Batman, not Batman, Ding Batman. <laughs> and these are called Ding Bats ornaments, initials. Ding Bats are sort of like, uh, you, you hear that term in digital type, typography still. Mm -hmm. um, and Ding Bats are just these little things. So he created Ding Batman with, it's hard, it's not wanting to focus, but. And so he's got this whole story about Ding Bats. <laughs> And it's just all about Ding Batman. Um, we take a little language break? So a language break would be great. And I think we're gonna do some test printing because we're getting into 25 minutes after and I do wanna print. I wanna put ink on blocks on the paper for everyone. So let's give our viewers and our translator like one minute of that. And then we'll be back with Amanda. Take the AirPods off, okay. switch over. We are muted on purpose right now um, while we take a break. Um, do you want to say that loudly? Just that we're taking a one minute break and we're muted on purpose. We are taking a one minute break and we're muted on purpose because we should all take a little break and think about what I've just said for the last 25 minutes. And then we're going to get into printing. So just take a breath, take some time out.
sound test. Yeah, hi everybody. So we are back and Andrew hey. switched mics. So hopefully you can hear, I'm behind the camera, I'm Chelsea. Andrew, do you wanna say hello again? Hi there, can you and then, hear me? And then Amanda's also gonna say hi. Hello everyone. And we would love to just hear from you in the chat, whether we are all audible if we do things like this for a little while. Um, you sound far away. I sound far away. Yeah, I'll try to keep close to Andrew. Does this help? Can you hear me now? Can you, how's it sound? Okay, and then Amanda, can you project really loud? Hey, everyone. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> we can put it on speaker right now it's on internal microphone i think you can switch it to speaker so we can also hear if they want to shout out anything they're just going to chat to us okay, okay cool. chat's better okay so like i said this is the sort of rock star press everyone thinks of when they think of letter press because it's the old school hand press because you pull a lever with your hand to make a print and i set this today hopefully i spelled it right um that's Cooper Black. It's one of my favorite typefaces just because it sort of has this, I don't know, there's a sort of a classic feel to it, but it's also very contemporary lately. Um, so this is oil-based ink. And we have these great tables around here that are specifically designed for us so we can ink right on the table. And when you ink, you want a nice velvety consistency and there's a hiss that you can hear um it's addicting as a printer you know that sound and you know you're in the sweet spot when you have it so now that's charged up with ink as some would say and i'm just going to roll it on the type and i'm pressing sort of hard rolling slowly technically if you do it well you can do one pass and i missed a little there so i'm going to add a little more and I'm a notorious over inker. I like to over ink about things for long periods of time. So I, I'm gonna <laughs> add more ink because that's just how I roll. And I set up a piece of paper on the bed here. This is a little cheat system for myself. And I can take the paper and line it up approximately where the paper underneath is. And just set it down. I don't need packing on this press the way it operates. This comes down. This stays on top. You go under till it stops. And then you pull this. Oh, and I felt it stop. And I'm dwelling. There's a little pause. And then I release. The other day, Amanda was here printing with me and she got it all the way back to here. <laughs> <laughs> she pulled the hand all the way back and this one stopped way yeah, shorter yeah. and that shows you the difference in height of type um, and you roll it out and you pull this up and did i spell it right proof Proof's wow look at that that's beautiful so that's zine fest a little light in the middle, isn't it? It reminds me of like jeans, like denim jeans. Denim jeans, yeah. yeah. And I like this distressing in ink. I notoriously, like I said, I over ink, but when you ink lightly, you get texture and you get character in the print. Beautiful. Is that like linen texture, the paper? It is a linen paper and I had a big box of it and I just thought it's nice and thick. It'll be nice to give out at the event. So that's what I used. If you want to set that on the drying rack, we'll try one of these green ones here and I'll add a little more ink. I want to get a nice rich print. And that could have been because there was no ink on the actual type. The first time you add ink to a form or type, it's usually kind of taking it on, it's absorbing it. The second one I'm guessing will be a little bit better. I could add some packing if I would like. That's two sheets. That's not how you do it. And that's just eyeball. We're not going for accuracy here. Let's try this and see if that helps a little. Down, in, and a little more pressure on my side. 
Okay, we're going to come back out and then we're going to move to a different task here after this. See. The reveal. Oh, we're, getting there. we're getting there. So pretty. And it's interesting because this was blue ink on that white paper, but on the screen, it just goes nice and kind of dark blue yeah. and it has a nice organic look to it. So there you go. So that's printing on a hand press. It's not, it, it's a favorite press because it's sort of easy in a way and gravity works against you. You just set forms right on there and I use magnets. I don't have to lock things in tightly because I'm not moving vertically or horizontally. And so it makes it fast and easy. I'm gonna do a little cleanup. I don't want it to dry on there. There's a little cleaning that has to happen. And then we're going to go over to this number two press over here. And this is the point where I'm going to ask for some crowd participation. And I would like the crowd to think about five to seven letter words. And I'd like to pick three of them from crowd comments. So don't worry about how they relate. I see it more as a poetic exchange of words from different people who are watching this from different parts of wherever they're at, the country or the world. And so just start typing in some five to seven letter words um, that the moderators can pick from. And I will, I will hand set those. I'll show you how you hand set um, based on what you give me. So, and if no one types anything in the comments, we will make them up. So don't feel pressure. There's yeah, no yeah. Pressure here. This, is, this is not a test. <laughs> we have okay. good words already. Great. Oh, good great. words is great. So now we're gonna go over here and Yesterday, I printed a menu. So these are three typefaces, wood type, that I pulled out the drawers and they're sitting back there. And so pick a word and then pick one of these and I will set it. And then we're gonna go to the next word and a different type and the third word and the final type. Should I let Amanda make the choice from these words? I don't care. That, I'm, that would okay. be fun. I don't want to be part of the decision making. <laughs> okay. Unless it ultimately comes down to that. Okay. Okay. Amanda, I'm gonna okay. read you some words oh, and you have pressure. to pick, you can pick the first one. Okay. Um express. Ooh, express. I like that. Okay. Tiger. Ooh, tiger. I like that too. Write a few down because scratch. Scratch. Okay. Sometimes breathe. Alive. Alive. Random. Random. Print. Print. And read. Read. Oh my goodness. Okay, I need to write these down. I wrote some of them down. You did? I did. Okay, great. Quickly. Express, tiger, breathe, alive, read, and then I missed a couple in there. What was in there? Um, let me go back and look. Gotta pull up the chat again. This is so fun. We had random. Random. Did you get scratch? I like random and like scratch. Ooh, I, I like, like scratch, scratch too. Yeah. Yowza. Yeah, Yowza is a great one. Ooh. No, Walnut. Ooh. Be open minded here because some of the typefaces don't have enough letters in them. We have maybe two C's or one L. And so we have yeah. to be flexible. We also have light. Light. L I G H T yeah, light. Gotcha. And mm. Mon Ami. And texture. Ooh, that one's a good word too. I like that. It's a long one. Yeah. But we can oh, it. I missed texture. Like, texture is a good one. Then you gotta think about how it's gonna fit with this type of face and mm -hmm. what it'll look like. And this is an example of what you go through as a printer as an artist that is setting some type and wanting to make a poster, you have to look through the catalog and you have to pick, you have to think about what type's gonna work for this message that I'm making. Yeah. And I, I, I'm excited about this portion of the event because I think it'll be good. We had one but, vote in the chat for Tuscan. So maybe you can pick the word that you think belongs in Tuscan. You come Tuscan. out there because I'm gonna set. Because okay. I, we gotta get printed. How many words are we doing? Three. Three words, and we're doing it in Tuscan. Okay. Well, we're doing one of them in Tuscan. Well, they don't all have to. One of them is going to be in Tuscan. Three different words, and each one is going to highlight one of those. Okay, things. I'm just going to like. 
Okay, one of them is express. The pencil landed on express. I like pencil landing. Yeah, pencil landing. We're just gonna, I just have feelings Random. about I'm having good. to choose. Okay. Uh, scratch. I was sending vibes for scratch. I wanted scratch <laughs> to be a word. Okay, scratch. Okay, ready? Oh, this is the last one. I feel like the. Okay, 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 okay. It's been like a letterpress game show. Okay. It's between alive and read. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Oh. I vote for alive. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to do express. Scratch and Alive in Tuscan. Well, I think, are we, oh. which word gets which font? Okay, let's do Express in Tuscan. Okay. And let's do Scratch in. Hold on, let me just do Express. Just give me one second. Okay. I'm going to go to this okay. one in French and Antique. You might want to come over here too to see the typeset. Okay. We will follow you. Yes, let's do it. Okay. So now, as I showed you, these are not California cases because wood type is so large, it doesn't get organized the way the little metal type is. It's just randomly laid in the case. And this is concave Tuscan is the technical full name, but I couldn't have enough letters to write concave with Tuscan. So I just wrote Tuscan. This is Cheltenham. We're not using it today, but it's upper and lower. So here's Express. Okay. What's the next one? Scratch in French Antique. Okay, French Antique is next. This is French Antique. It's a very narrow type. I know that we got to the frantic active part of okay. the activity. So I wanted to check in with our interpreters and also with the chat sure. to see if you're all following along and if my camera work isn't making everyone too dizzy. What's next? Last word is alive and gothic. Alive. Gothic is here. It's only one A, so we're, we're good. <laughs> I did not want to run into the issue of running out of characters because that would be awkward. It's alive. Should we put like an exclamation point? Yeah, let's put an exclamation point in there. And how do you want to arrange these? We're getting nice comments in the chat. Scratch, express, alive. Yeah, I think so. I think that might also be nice. It's a longer word. Okay, maybe come on this side. Actually, you can, if you want to open the tripod and set it down and give yourself a break here, that will help probably. Um, yeah, and then we just want to You can just angle things. Whoops, wrong way. Sorry, folks. I've okay. been doing that a lot. I know. It's <laughs> counterintuitive, isn't it? All right. This is called a lockup, and you need to lock things up. And again, we're sort of cheating using magnets and such. Um, but this form is set to fit this piece of paper. And I kind of cheated already. I laid it out so that we could quickly set the stuff. And actually, these require, um, these are called reglets. Their technical term is reglet. I'm going to say spacer for everyone. It provides space in between the characters. And it's known as letter spacing in the typography um, layout world. Isn't that also called kerning? Yes, so there are various terms that people use that came from the letterpress world. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, there's a term called leading, which comes from literally from lead, because a lot of type is made with a composite of metals, but one of the main metals was lead for a long time. And I know there's concern lead is not the healthiest thing to be um, actively using, but Technically, there's not enough in it unless you were holding it all day long and chewing on it. Nowadays, it's not lead, it's other metals. Um, and then 
So that one, I spaced everything out. I like spacing on these sort of posters because it opens it up, it gives it a little air. And this one, I'm gonna show you how you do something called a coin. It's not spelled like money. Um, and now I'm testing myself. It's with a Q and an O and a U and an I and an N. Coin, did I spell that right? Maybe someone can correct me. Q-U? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm failing. And I wanted to mention it earlier. I by no means am a letterpress scholar or an expert here. Um, this is the wrong key. And I don't pretend to be one. There are some here, Eric, the founder, he knows a lot about this stuff and the history and I love it. Um, and then there's others in the community that know a lot about this stuff. And it's kind of like, I relate it to the automotive industry where there's gearheads and they know all the details about every little thing. And that's pretty interesting, but for me, I just like to make stuff and I like to work with people and I like to communicate ideas. And so I'm not as concerned with the details and all the names and such. Um, and I hope people can appreciate that. That's like the great thing about working in a community with different people. It's like, you don't have to know everything because there's different people who are interested in different parts. Yep. Um, can you hand me that wood piece up there? It probably has a technical name. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to show everyone. You always tap your forms down. Make sure it's completely flat. I love how both of today's presentations from Amanda and now Andrew are so tactile. Yeah. So that's important that you mention that. One of the, the things my wife teaches ceramics and she has for many years. She gets a lot of people in the tech industry coming to learn ceramics because they get tired of working digital all day long. And we get the same here in letterpress. People, I have an iPad Pro, I have a phone, right? I'm with gadgets and my son loves games. I grew up on video games and stuff, but I, working with my hands, my entire creative career has been such an important, critical part of, you know, expressing myself. And it, it's during, when I went to printmaking um, school in the late 90s, it was heavily digital. It was Academy of Art University with a high amount of students doing animation and Pixar was booming and mm -hmm. you know all the, the internet was going crazy. It was pre like apps and smartphones and all that stuff, but it was still like you could tell digital was the future. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm going back into screen printing and woodblock printing and lithography and things that you do with your hands. And there's something about it that you just don't get when you work in the digital space. And it's hard to explain that. It's not for everyone, but it's certainly, it's grounding. Like they say, gardening can be grounding. Or yeah. helpful. So I have this locked in. I use some magnets. Um, I'm going to ink up with just black this time. Hold on, let me get... Let me get in view again. Oh yeah, it's all good. All right, I think, I think I said it backwards. Okay, I'm good. A little bit of a check there to make <laughs> sure I didn't set it in reverse. And this press is called a cylinder press. This is a cylinder and it's on a track. You can see the gears here and it doesn't move up and down at all. There's no movement up and down. It is. Um, it is set up for what's called type high. And type high is a type letterpress nerd thing. It's 0.918. It's, there's gauges and tools, everything. That's one beautiful thing of typography and or type design, type construction and letterpress. This height has been around for 500 years. Letterpress has been used widely for more than 500 years. In fact, when Gutenberg invented it, it was considered disruptive technology, just like the way apps and media are now, because all of a sudden people, he made a huge Bible. And then out of that came smaller Bibles and proliferation and democratization of media was done through the printing press. And so the letterpress industry really just shot that out to the world. And that's where chat books and books and media was shared. Before that, it was coveted and people were protective of it and you weren't uh, literacy rates are lower and things like that. And so it's still 
up until the mid 20th century was widely used commercially. Letterpress was creating books and media that we use. It's only because digital has it fallen way off and that we can turn it into more of creative art field. Um, but the amazing thing with letterpress is it lasted as long as it did. And I can't imagine Instagram or, you know, a Twitter 500 years from now, everyone doing a webinar about it saying, oh my God, this technology has been around for 500 years and we still just think it changed the world. Because I just don't think it will. I mean, people don't talk about, I use Pandora and I get <laughs> you made fun of it, Spotify or something else, some new thing. Yeah. And so digital technology just recreates itself so fast and it's, it's not really doing what letterpress did, what these timeless machines have done. So I have the form locked up. I'm gonna put a piece of white paper down to start and I have it set up to just set right at the bottom there. And I just tap it lightly and I should clean my hands a little before the presentation and time. I'm not gonna wash my hands. Felt good. I felt a little gif. My son recorded a video on the North Bay Letterpress Arts Instagram where I recorded him. And he said, there's an oomph. And right as you hit the letters, you can feel the cylinder push into the paper. I'm gonna go back so that it's easier for the people. Get the reveal here. Wow, look at that. So, wow. so there you go. That's a letterpress, live set, hand set crowd sourced digital media meets analog. So we have about 10 minutes left here and I'm gonna save these forms and tomorrow I'm gonna print off, I have a big stack and I added the little footer that says Santa Rosa Zine Fest, Sonoma County Library, North Bay Letter Press Arts. I'm gonna print a lot of these whoop, and they'll be available Saturday to pick up. Hopefully the ink is dry. Are those for free or are you they selling are them? They are free, 100% for free. Uh, I'll probably do some of that Zine Fest one over there too because it's kind of cool and I yeah. like it. So I might have a couple, um, but I'll clean these up tonight and bring them back out tomorrow and you guys don't have to watch me print 100 pages. Everyone is starry eyed. Yay! So I have one thing left before you get into- Questions? Questions, I want to show you real quickly. I am going to wash my hands a little bit. We have these wet wipes. And I want to show everyone how it relates back to the zines. And so this is a letterpress printed cover of those sketchbooks. I call them sketchy books. And this is a sketchbook cover I made that I'll be selling Saturday. It was letterpress printed with that same narrow Gothic with a silver ink. And so my zine form is you pick some paper. This looks good. Sure, why not? This is text paper nice and thin, has a nice quality to it. Um, put it in here, maybe a few more sheets. And you chalk it up in this, this device that Eric made, which is beautiful, I love it. So that you can fold right on the edge there. This is called a bone folder. This is actually made from bone, but they do make silica versions if you're a vegan or you don't like the idea of this old cattle bone being used for that. And then I find the center and I have this wonderful stapler that my wife bought and she doesn't know it's here, but she does. <laughs> Just joking, <laughs> wouldn't do that. <laughs> and I staple and there it is. I have one last thing real quickly, go that way. <laughs> As the sign says, no, this way here. Oh. As the sign says here, unlike our trendy competitors, we cut corners. Prices rounded up. <laughs> this is called a corner cutter. And I need to trim this just slightly here. So they're accurate. All right. This is one of my most favorite things in the shop. That's why I wanted to show everyone. Press down, maybe come up here a little. Yeah. And let me clean this one up a little. And there you go. It's a little sketchbook with cut corners and a letterpress cover. 
that I made in just a couple of seconds there. So beautiful. <laughs> I love it. It is really beautiful. I know that we are nearing the end of our time. We have like five minutes left. Would you like to hear a couple questions from our questions. audience? Okay, I'm gonna go to the Q&A first. So someone asks, is it possible to mix materials when printing like metal type and wood type or another material? That's a great question. There's a weird thing in the type industry where metal type is type high, the 918 number. For some reason, wood type was made slightly taller. No one's ever explained to me why that is. So when you mix them, you have to offset and you have to make sure that they're even. That's the only thing that matters is that everything is even. And there are lots of tricks to do that, but you can mix. And you can mix the cuts, the little images, and those vary. Uh, I'll tell you now, wood type can take a pretty long printing um, amount of volume. Lead type does impact after time. And if you put too much paper down, we don't have enough time, but I was gonna show you just adding one extra piece of paper or removing a few will really change the, the print. It's a very precise height. And so if your print's light, you add one sheet of paper, not a thick sheet, one sheet, and you'll see it'll dramatically change the impression, which is what the print is called, the impression on the paper. And letterpress is known for deep impressions. That's sort of a, a, a thing that letterpress artists use that people can recognize. Oh, it's deep and embossed. I actually am more of what's called kissing the paper. I like my ink to sit flat. I don't like too much of an impression, but there are times for all of it. Um, but I know it feels nice. It is kind of cool to yeah. see the, the dimension, <laughs> dimensionality of it. Um, we have another really fascinating question. Um, do you have printed books on American Indian children's histories made only with symbols? We don't have that, but we did acquire... Oh, am I going to be able to find them? We acquired some this year. Maybe they're in the back because they were near. Yeah, so there's another thing in the industry called type foundries and type casters. Those are people that make the type with the molten aluminum and a matrix, and it's a whole complex thing. There's only maybe a dozen or two dozen in the world left, really, that do it. There's a big one in San Francisco that's famous. It's been around over 100 years. And then there's another one in Sebastopol of all places. Can and I show that one more time? His name is Pat Ray, and he makes type. He makes sets of type, and you can buy it from him. I don't think he made these. I think Eric, the founder, bought these, but they are um, native symbols. And they're little ornaments that you can arrange. There's several of each one. It's not just this in the box. There's like six of each. Yeah. And um, this is what the type looks like when you buy a, a set of type. This is a sample of it and the size. And inside this, there's, uh, I don't know how many, I forget the exact count. There's several hundred in here. And so you get 30 A's and 30 E's and 30 I's and not as many J's and stuff like that. Cool. I'm gonna go back to the Q and A here. Um, have artists ever brought in their own cuts to print in combination with the text you have? Amanda just did that the other day. And it's one in the, actually in that purple bag there. Oh yeah. So Amanda brought this in the other day and we wanted, I wanted to show her, she, she prints at home with her hand, which is, that's the traditional way of relief printing. And that goes back thousands of years. That's way before Gutenberg invented a press. You would hand press it with your hands. So we did print this the other day and I wanted her to experience how much easier it is and the, the clean sort of pressure that you get and the ink that we have and stuff like that. Um, we don't have time, but I am gonna print on top of some of these tomorrow to show you what it looks like to layer things. That's so awesome. And then um, someone asked in the chat, someone said that they can't be at the in-person fest, but they would love to uh, buy one of our prints and have them mailed the ones that we did today. So I'm gonna go ahead and say um, either Santa Rosa Zine Collective or our library. I'm not sure which, but I will take it upon myself as part of Santa Rosa Zine Collective, if that's the easiest way. Sure. Um, if you want to email us um, your mailing address, I would totally be happy 
if it's anything that we're giving out for free at the fest, I'm happy to sacrifice a stamp to get it in your hands. So you can email us and we will get it to you. Um, our email is santarosazinefest at gmail.com. And Michelle, we would love to get that to you. And you can let us know over email whether you were specifically talking about Scratch Alive. Express. Scra Bobby. Express Scratch Alive yeah. or Zinefest or both. <laughs> um, Dawn asks, what type of brand slash cylinder press you were using? That's called a number two. Oh, I don't know the name. Again, I'm not the gearhead <laughs> guy. I get scolded for this. Um, it is a Vandercook. I thought it was a Vandercook. So there's several brands. Vandercook is a very well-known brand. Heidelberg, um, Ostrander is pretty popular. This is a press back here. We didn't show anyone this. And this is a galley with some stuff of mine. Um, this is a press that has a motor. And I did want to show it because it's kind of complex, but there's a switch here. And you can turn on the motor and it inks all these different rollers. So you get an even print every single time. And when you put this down, you can feed the paper in with little grippers here that will hold your paper down, clamp it down, and you roll forward and the print comes out and you roll back and it's, when it's here, it's inking and keeping the ink um, soft and moving and even and it's, Automated press, I did all my zine covers on this press. It's called the SP-15, the Vandercook SP-15. It's a very widely popular, heavily used press for letter press. Well, this has been absolutely wonderful. Um, Michelle is also asking if we can now make a zine called Scratch Express Alive, which I think is a great idea. Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, this has been just fabulous. I know we've got just two minutes left, so I probably think it's time to say goodbye to our dear friends, Andrew and Amanda, and bring back in Tara to close us out and tell us about what is in store for you the rest of this week. And I just say thank you to everyone, everyone that helped make this happen, the people involved that made it, made it happen, and then those who registered and uh, took the time to watch. It's interesting for some, I know, it, could have been a little slow at times or confusing it for others and then the translation is probably tricky at times as well i apologize we did our best but we appreciate it thank you so much everyone said it was a fascinating presentation right. and wonderful <laughs> so good to have you amanda all right tara we're gonna mute ourselves and it's all you Okay, great. Thank you so much, Andrew and Amanda. That was amazing. Um, absolute, absolute delight. I love letterpress and obsessed with it. And I, I have had the pleasure of actually taking a class at North Bay Letterpress Arts, um, a poetry printing class with Eric a few years ago. One of the best experiences of my life. So if you're able, you know, once they're more open to the public and doing classes, highly recommend getting in there and trying it out. Um, and again, a reminder that both Andrew and Amanda will be at our in-person event on Saturday. That's again at the Northwest Regional Library at Cottingtown. That event will be from one to five and we'll have a live zine making workshop. We'll share a video and have a live Q&A hopefully with um, some teens who have started a zine club at their high school. We'll have live music. So that the in-person event will be really, really fun. We also have some great events coming up this Friday. Um, at four o'clock, we have Luis Blackaller, who is a Mexican artist and creator, who will be doing a presentation in Spanish on zines as a DIY publication. So don't miss that. And we will have English interpretation for that one. Um, so if you don't speak Spanish, still come and we'll have an English room for that. And then we have a virtual zine social on Friday at six o'clock. And that will be an opportunity for people to come and share their work with each other, learn about other artists in an informal virtual setting. So um, we've just had a, an amazing week so far and we can't wait to celebrate with you for the rest of the week. Thank you all so much for coming and a huge thank you to Julie and Lorna, our interpreters. Um, you can register for other events at sonomalibrary.org slash zinefest2022. Thank you so much and we'll see you later in the week.